as I know you wouldn't be. But to have Glenn get what's happening, and now he comes out and basically flips it and, and is almost like joining them, saying that, you know, there's a horrible Tea Party movement for violence. I, Alex Jones wants violence. He said this last night and this morning. We played the clip earlier. And that, and that I'm a Malcolm X character, extremely dangerous. What do you make of this William F. Jasper? Well, I, I think uh, you're right. This is fear talking, probably, uh, with Glenn. He uh, is looking at the at the horizon and at things here, and he's and he's hearing from other people. Uh, gee, Glenn, uh, looks like you could be blamed for this. And so, rather than uh, taking the principal course, he's trying to divert uh, attention to others, trying to throw other people under the bus. I, I'm I'm familiar with this for years with uh, conservatives, pseudo conservatives, neo conservatives, etc. Uh, attacking us uh, because they think that will endear them to the uh, liberal left media or uh, somehow immuni immunize them against attacks by the establishment. And of course it doesn't. It never does. They'll come after you later uh, or maybe even sooner. Uh, many of the people who tried to throw us under the bus are dead and gone. <laughs> they, they didn't survive. Uh, and uh, so the, the really the only uh wise course is really the principled course stand for freedom try to do it as wisely as you can and as forthrightly and as courageously as as you can uh, we have something to fight for we're fighting for our freedom we're fighting for the the legacy our heritage that we have received we're fighting for our our children and our grandchildren we're fighting for this great country and uh, we're fighting to not be conquered and run by really evil people. You know, I use the term there's to say- no, There's no place to run to anymore, folks. <laughs> I, I, I keep running into people that say they're leaving the country and going somewhere else. Look, there's no other place to go to. It's time to stand here and fight. William F. Jasper, editor of The New American Magazine, thenewamerican.com. Go there and get a subscription today to the hard copy and wake people up. But, but here's my question. I call myself a classical liberal or a constitutionalist. They've seized the term liberal. Do you agree with me that I mean, I would call what you guys do as classical liberal. I mean, you're promoting... Well, absolutely. That's been our uh, ongoing uh, mantra for, for many years. Uh, the liberal, conservative, Democrat, Republican, right, left uh, political spectrum is gamed. Uh, it really ha has very little significance. Occasionally, we fall into the trap of using that conservative. Yes, we're conservative in in to the extent that we're trying to conserve all of those values and those liberties that we have. We are liberal, though, in the sense that the Founding Fathers were in believing that people should have liberty, governments should be restricted, and that governments should be restricted yeah. to protecting those. When I put a bunch of hot sauce on my eggs, it's a liberal amount. I want lots of freedom, lots of property, lots of families, lots of religious freedom, but you don't tell me what to do. They call equality the government running my life. That's not equality. Right. Well, what we have to do particularly, and, and here's where, uh, you know, we keep referring to the federal government, the federal agency, etc. Well, federalism is a very important concept, a very important idea, a very important principle uh, it, that Americans need to understand better if we're going to maintain our freedom. Federalism uh, states that we have a government of a, a central government, a national government of enumerated delegated powers, very limited number of powers specified in the Constitution. All of the other powers are reserved to the states and to the people. And by the way, they think the public, I'm skipping this network break because it's so important and going to the bottom of the hour so stations shouldn't cover this up. It's our network break. It's our break. I just want to point I'm doing that out for listeners because this is so important. William F. Jasper, I hear them go. Federalism says you do what the federal government says when, as you just said, the federalism talks about how limited federal power is. Why right. even have states? Uh, right. if, if the federal government's God. Those are enumerated powers. That means they're listed, they're numbered in the Constitution, and they're delegated. That means they are given to the federal government, those specific powers, by the states and the people. We are the principal, they are the agent. It only stays that way, however, if the principal keeps the agent under control. And so I get very upset with so-called conservatives who call for 
big government programs supposedly to implement conservative ag agendas. The federal government uh, has to stay out of those areas. We can uh, fight over certain issues at the state and local level as to whether the government should be involved in education, environment, or those things. But first of all, as a constitutionalist, we have whenever anyone proposes a law, we look at it and say, um, okay, if you want a law there, uh, take it up at your state and local level. There is no uh, authority in the Constitution for the federal government, the national government, to get involved. And, and herein lies the solution. If the governor had done his job, if the sheriff had done their job, and pointed out, hey, a federal judge said last year the BLM's involved in a conspiracy with environmental groups, we would have had the moral authority, they would have backed off and not almost had a civil war start. So I don't want a civil war. The globalists want to start a civil war. Glenn Beck knows that. And I agree. He said in the larger interview, I don't know if you heard it or just you're so sophisticated you got it. He is afraid and says he's afraid. So, Glenn, the way to be safe is to come together and be honest that you're afraid they're going to stage something and blame us. Or if people do kill each other, it's not our fault. But don't say I'm to blame just because you are jealous and hate me. I mean, I am honored that Glenn Beck takes so much of our material and does stuff with it. That's great. I, I'm not mad about that. You don't have to project onto me and destroy me because, you know, you were a rock jock guy in the morning and picked up my, quote, shtick, as you thought it was, and have been successful. Good for you, Glenn. And again, I never talk about Glenn Beck or any other talk show host. I have to do this when he spent the last three shows literally, I played it in the first hour, folks, saying the violence group is the, quote, the Alex Jones group, and you don't want to be with them. And that is defamation on its face. I am not calling for violence, and everyone knows it. I'm trying to expose it, but but I'm... Well, that's why what uh, Sheriff Mack is doing is so important. Uh, and I know you know him and interview him. Uh, I was one of the first ones to interview him back when he was a sheriff and was fighting the good fight. And uh, it, it's very important here that, for instance, uh, we mentioned, we talked about the Hage case. One of the reasons why the Hages were successful is that they had worked with and had educated Sheriff DeMaio of Nye County and uh, informed him. He wasn't at, at first sure how to take on the, the federal government, the BLM, the Park Service, etc. cetera. Uh, but he got up to speed on this. And because of that, he told the he told the feds, look, you're, after they rustled the cattle and whatnot, he says, look, you're not going to come in and do that in in my county. He didn't get up there and uh, threaten them and beat his chest or anything. He's a very down to earth guy. He said, look, you have to obey the law like everybody else. I'm the sheriff here. If you have a court order, bring me the court order. And if you have a writ of execution, bring it to me. My guys, me and my guys, will take care of it. That's how it works. That's the law. You guys have to obey the law. We have to obey the law. And if Sheriff Gillespie had done this in Clark County, we wouldn't have had uh, the near showdown that we that we did there. If he had uh, stood up and done what he was supposed to do, and that's what Sheriff Mack is educating so many of these sheriffs around the country. It isn't uh, as the uh, the left likes to portray it as the establishment media tries to portray it, that these are a bunch of Yahoo sheriffs that are anxious to, to uh, test their adrenaline, their testosterone against the federal agencies. No, they're just saying, look, uh, we're for the rule of law. We are the, the law enforcement here in the county. When you come out here and operate in our, our area, we don't want our citizens hurt. We don't want violence. We know how to handle it. And that's, of course, uh, the way it worked in Waco. Uh, the sheriff there never had any problem with David Koresh and with those people. He went out there, he uh, brought uh, those people into into town or into jail a few times, never had any problems. He openly Bad said, hey, David jogs into town every day. Came into, They run an auto parts place. You, could, you just go put the handcuffs on him. I've done it before. Yeah. But no, they so, wanted uh, a big I, armed I mean, showdown. That's what we, that's what we, Americans need to realize that uh, the 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 people that are really bringing on the violence are those who at for instance the the Center for Biological Diversity and the National Wildlife Federation who are trying to egg on the BLM and whatnot. Come on, you guys, uh, show us that you got some guts. Get out there and, and get these guys. Don't let these 
these ranchers, these welfare ranchers uh, run roughshod over you. And so they're the ones that are that are urging the violence, that are urging the... the no, they the really are the bad guys. And I wanted to briefly talk about that. You've been to dozens of global UN meetings and what they do, they do this locally as well. They hire a 10 to 21 people, AstroTurf. They have accredited NGOs that are funded by Soros Group, State Department and others. They then go out and agitate and act like they're citizens. They'll fund a group to move into your town. They'll get federal grants. They'll have all the money. And they'll end up running for mayor and being your mayor. They'll end up taking over the water commission because they're seizing your infrastructure. Then five years later, they'll turn around and sell your water off for one cent on the dollar to some multinational and leave. And the mayor has gone. And then the mayor gets a you know one million dollar contract with the energy company out of the netherlands i'm talking about a real case outside austin these are really just wicked corporations using government to set land and resources off use so they can come in a few years later and use it and they have their their ngos their environmental ngos every uh county every state usually they have something like friends in them friends of the wasatch friends of the rio grande friends of the snake river friends of the columbia and they're all being funded by the big foundations and the big corporations uh to put a veneer of uh eco-friendly uh concern on an issue uh when really it's all about control and taking away property rights and if as uh, Madison, uh, Jefferson, Washington, all of them said, if you don't have property rights, you don't have any other rights because without your That's property, right. you can't uh, you can't do anything. You're up, you're beholden to uh, government for for everything. That's right. Uh, in closing, we've got about three four minutes left. In your gut, looking at what's happening in Ukraine, here's a headline: Edward Lucas, top historian. I hope I'm wrong, but historians may look back and say this was the start of World War Three. Uh, that's the London uh, Daily Mail. Uh, you know, we've got all of this unfolding. Uh, you've got uh, both sides uh, manipulating. Uh, you've got well, all the things Obama's doing. What does your gut tell you about the future? And in essence, after you answer that, what makes the New World Order tick? Who are they? Uh, what is well, their mindset? First of all, since you brought up Ukraine, uh, I, I really, uh, I could be wrong, uh, but I really don't. Uh, believe this is headed toward a military confrontation that would become World War III. I think that is what the globalists are trying to make us think, because they want us to jump behind this new Marshall Plan for the Ukraine. Uh, and I believe that Putin and company, the Kremlin, are uh, working hand in glove uh, with uh, with the IMF, the European Union on this. Uh, although they're proclaiming they don't want Ukraine to be in the European Union, uh, actually, uh, all the evidence that I, I've read shows that they do. The, the That's European very sophisticated. I agree with you at, at certain levels because then that gives them an excuse to grab part of Ukraine. And then well, it, 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 there are multiple gains on this. One, the International Monetary Fund is using this to justify all this doubling of all of its resources. Uh, so uh, if it's got to stabilize Europe to stop World War Three. Right. It, it, they're going to use it to bail out all of the banks. That's that what have, Soros is saying. Right. To bail out all the banks that have lent money to Ukraine and to all of these uh, uh, kleptocrats over there. Uh, what, what we are seeing in Ukraine, I mean, I, I feel very strongly for, uh, for the Ukrainian people. We have written more stories at the New American about the Holodomor, the famine and the cover up of the famine and the New York Times and all of their role in the state. No, Department. but you're giving the sophisticated chess level events that are going on. Right. So so those. Um, so so I, I feel for the Ukrainian people. I do wish that they would have their own independence. But the, all of the polls show that the vast majority of Ukrainians do not want to go into either the, the Russian customs union or into the European Union. And, and by Soros pressure, it forces some into the Russians, some into the EU, just like they partitioned Germany or partitioned Poland. Same global grand chessboard program. Who right. are the and, new... And so it, it is a bit confusing. I, I, have to, I, I have to agree. And I've gone through the backgrounds of almost all of the major... Uh, William F. Jasper, see what you've done. you got to stay five more. Come back, finish up Ukraine, and then I want you to give us your take on 
what makes the New World Order tick at its core? What will it do if it wins? You've studied them like no one else I know out there. I want your take on that. I'm Alex Jones, ladies and gentlemen, your host, Infowars.com. We're going to open the phones up coming up. We'll give the number out. Stay with us. We're on the